Hey there, today I'm going to show you how to leverage ChatGPT to do an assessment of your investment portfolio, get some recommendations, and compare different types of portfolios. A couple weeks back, I introduced you to a ChatGPT plugin called Portfolio Pilot. Today, we're going to dig a little bit deeper and I'm going to show you how to leverage ChatGPT and that plugin to do an analysis of your portfolio. First things first is I'm going to set up my environment. I'm leveraging the GPT-4 model. That's the latest large language model from OpenAI and I'm making sure that I have my Portfolio Pilot plugin activated. So in order for you to follow along with these prompts, make sure that you have those settings set up. All right, I'm going to walk you through my prompts and my prompts. Process. I'm going to give you my commentary along the way and hopefully you find this helpful. First, I'm pasting in my portfolio that I put together for this exercise. It has a ticker symbol, the name, shares, and the value for that particular investment in my portfolio. And I'm asking ChatGPT to do two things right here out of the gate, and that's summarize the portfolio and also do a portfolio assessment. So let's see what ChatGPT returns. So here is a nice table showing the investments in my portfolio and it's actually calculating the weights, which is really nice. I didn't give it I didn't give it the weights. It's it's automatically doing that and it's returning the expected return, the expected risk and the market beta for each one of these items. That's pretty neat. All right. Now it's doing the portfolio assessment and it's returning an overall score of 344 out of 1000 for this portfolio based on risk adjusted returns and downside protection. And that, I think that's actually pretty helpful. I like having a global score on my portfolio and then I like that it's decomposed into risk adjusted returns and downside protection. That's very interesting. Then it's giving me a little bit more commentary on the different risk factors that goes into the model. So this is leveraging a model developed by Portfolio Pilot. Usually these models have different factors that you're looking at. And here are the factors that have gone into this particular risk model. So that's helpful. These aren't always going to be the same uh, across different types of engines, but these are the ones that are being leveraged in the model that is being used by the Portfolio Pilot plugin. And then, and then, so that's that's nice that it lays out those different factors. And then here, it's giving me some recommendations in terms of how I can improve my portfolio. And most of these look pretty pretty good. Yes, I have too much exposure to U.S. equities. Yes, I have too much exposure to tech. And some good recommendations would be to sell out of these names and reallocate into different asset classes. That makes intuitive sense to me. So those are some good recommendations. The next thing that I ask is a little bit more clarity on the different risk that that goes into the portfolio pilot model just to get a little bit more clarity in terms of where I can double click. And so with this prompt, ChatGPT returns the different categories of risk that you might assess in your portfolio. So if you're if you care about inflation, credit risk, asset classification, holdings, etc., you have all these risks that you can choose from and you can ask ChatGPT to evaluate your portfolio based on these particular risks. And so depending on on your situation, you might you might want to do that. As an example, what I do here is I, I ask ChatGPT to do an asset class diversification risk. So this is the risk of me being overly concentrated in certain asset classes. So as I mentioned, I know that I'm overweight on equities. Typically you want equities, bonds, commodities. You want a nice mix of different asset classes to help with diversification, which is generally what you're after. And so let's see what, what ChatGPT returns with here. And it's telling me that yes, I have over concentration in certain sectors via equities. And that's financials, I'm, I'm heavy financials, I'm heavy government via the bond ETF, I'm sure, heavy consumer discretionary, heavy information technology, yes, with Amazon and Meta. So these all seem like pretty good recommendations. And it, it even gives us a nice little visual here of our weights and the, across these different sectors as well. So that's, that's pretty nice. And let's see here, it looks like this includes, this is a look at my, my holdings 
and it's, it's including the the different weights for my holdings so it's a nice nice little chart there all right the next thing that I asked ChatGPT is for recommendations in terms of other asset classes that I should consider. So I know I'm overweight U.S. equities and maybe even overweight U.S. bonds. What other asset classes should I be looking to fill? And bonds, yes, makes sense. I know I'm underweight bonds. I think it was just at 20%, but usually you want some sort of 60-40 split in a nice diversified portfolio. I know I'm underweight international equities, real estate, commodities, all these sectors look like they're areas where I should be parking some more assets to increase my overall di diversification. So those are some good recommendations. The next thing that I ask is for ETFs that would help me fill this international equities bucket. And let's see what um, ChatGPT returns with. A couple of uh, interesting options here. Okay. And I think those are these are these are some some good recommendations. One thing that I will that I will mention here is that the way that this engine is making these recommendations is based on the expected return and the expected risk for these particular ETFs or these or these particular funds. And, and usually looking at a ratio of those two called the Sharpe ratio. And so that's one way that you might look to fill this bucket, but you also might look at the funds with the, the largest assets under management in a, a particular bucket like international equities. You might look at the funds that have been around the longest. That might be one way in which you, you judge. You might be looking for recommendations from publications like Forbes and Wall and the Wall Street Journal. So this is one way that you can look at it, but it is it is a nice way to look at it in terms of the ratio of the expected return relative to the expected risk. So those are some recommendations. And then I asked for some recommendations in com for commodities and US real estate, and it didn't really do a good job of surfacing any recommendations there. So a bit of a miss um, there, I would say. So overall, looks like the, the ChatGPT in combination with Portfolio Pilot does a good job of assessing the overall risk of my portfolio and spotting some areas where I can improve and making some recommendations. But when it comes to recommending individual holdings or funds, it, it seems to be coming up a little bit short. So maybe you know, use a screener or, or do some additional research in terms of how to actually fill these different buckets. All right, so going back to the different risk in my portfolio, the next thing that I ask for is sector diversification. So as I mentioned, I know that I'm overweight financials and I'm overweight technology, and that is the case here. So I'm glad that ChatGPT was able to spot that. And then I ask, what sectors am I most underweight? I think this is a tough question for for AI. I, I think here I did a good job. Yes, underweight utilities, energy, consumer staples, industrials, healthcare, and it's actually given me the percentage in my portfolio. And yes, utilities is pretty small. And again, that might be an opportunity for me to add more holdings to this portfolio to help with that diversification. So nice, nice recommendation there. And then I asked ChatGPT how I can improve my downside protection score. And here it comes back with some analysis and some, some with a recommendation of adding to a money market fund and even does even does even 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 sells out of certain holdings and adds that to the money market fund which is pretty cool then the next thing that i'm doing here is i'm asking uh, for ChatGPT to return that fund and to give me the weights so i can better visualize what the recommendations are and here's my new holding here and that's uh, a money market fund here here, I am asking ChatGPT to compare this new portfolio with the original portfolio. And what's awesome is that ChatGPT has a long enough memory to say, oh, your original portfolio was this, and here's a new improved portfolio. And so now I can see what the different weights are for these two portfolios side by side, and it's returning it in a table just like I asked. So, that is pretty cool and it's following my instructions. I wanted to provide weight so I can see, I can easily compare like, oh, it looks like you want me to go from zero percent in money market funds to 10% in money market funds as well. Let's see where it's where it 
shaved it from it looks like okay SPY took it out of US stocks and put it into money markets into a money market fund all right so that's where that's where it came out of the next thing that I asked ChatGPT to do is to sell my Apple, my Amazon, and move it to QLVD. Again, this is going to be an international equities, large cap equities to help improve with the diversification. It's going to help to improve asset allocation because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be moving out of US only equities and adding more international flavor. Usually that's developed like Europe, etc. Then I asked uh, ChatGPT to, to, to run a new portfolio assessment and show me what that looks like. And here's the new assessment, 407 out of 1000, and it's giving me new scores on risk adjusted returns and downside protection. So that's pretty neat. But the question that I would have here is how does that compare with my original portfolio? So now, I asked ChatGPT to summarize to summarize the all all three portfolios here: the original portfolio, the first improved portfolio, and the latest improved portfolio with new exposure to international equities. So it does a good job of doing that. And I asked it to give me a portfolio assessment for each one of these portfolios and return it in table format so that I can visually see which is the best one. And it does a good job of doing that. Here's my original portfolio, and here's the first improved, here's the latest improved, here's my expected return for this portfolio, a volatility or expected risk, the sharp ratio, which is a ratio of these two items here, and an overall portfolio score. And it looks like, yes, my most recent portfolio scores the best with 407 based on the portfolio pilot risk engine. So I think that, that that's pretty neat. All right, so I hope you found that helpful and I want you to try that out. See how ChatGPT does with your portfolio. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to drop them below. And overall, I think it's a fun experience getting access to this type of sophisticated portfolio management tooling has typically only been available to institutional investors or individuals with with a Bloomberg terminal or some other sophisticated type of, of, of platform. And now the fact that it's available via ChatGPT, I think it's really cool. There are some misses that you saw in particular in terms of getting recommendations for commodity funds and real estate funds. But you know, aside from that, the risk management assessment, that's really nice, that's really robust. So give it a try and I'd love to hear about your experience. Drop it in the comments below. Thank you and talk to you soon.